Hi, thanks for tuning in. We're talking part three on snorkeling and underwater photography. And in this tutorial, we're gonna talk about underwater photography while snorkeling, looking through Snell's window, diving a little deeper, and taking macro shots even. All right, let's start with Snell's window. When you dive down underwater, if you use a very wide angle lens, and if you're not too deep, you can actually look through an area of the water optically while you'll see the top side. And it's kind of cool to have an image that you're shooting underwater and then you're looking at the top side through the water. In general, you want to have a very wide angle lens. You don't want to be down too deep and calm waters are preferred. It, pro it provides a clearer image of the top side. And it's nice if you can have an interesting subject underwater and top side. So here in Hawaii, I'm about six, seven feet deep. I got a picture with available light and a wide angle lens of this red sea urchin and you can see through this semicircle Snell's window with the sky and portion of the Sun. Uh, here's another shot. Uh, this was a little hut we were staying in Roatan. This is a little split level. That's just showing the hut. I got underwater with my wide-angle fisheye lens and dome port and available light and I got a picture of under the water here and then through Snell's window saw the hut and a little fish even swam over the water column. So I actually got a fish through Snell's window. It looks like the fish was kind of flying in the sky there. And with the good depth of field you get with a wide angle lens, everything was in focus. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, here I'm snorkeling under a dock and through Snell's window you can actually see the dock in addition to the fish and the intervening water column. Here's another example of Snell's window. I was snorkeling under that little hut in Roatan with a fisheye lens and I got the nice colorful roots of some of the mangroves here and then through Snell's window, this arc here, you can see the topside trees and part of our hut again. Here I actually did a self-portrait. I stayed out of the water, I shoved my camera into the water and again got some of the mangrove roots and got a picture of myself topside with some rays of sunlight and the trees coming through the roots and the trees. Here, uh, my dive buddies were eating lunch in between dives and, at Bonaire, and I, uh, I saw some of the divers were feeding fish here and uh, while eating, and there was, some, there was a file fish there eating, so I got my camera, jumped in, and I was able to get an image with my wide angle lens of the file fish eating some bread and then through Snell's window you can see the clouds and the purple restaurant and the diver. Oh, that's kind of blurred because there are some waves there. One other thing, we can sometimes dive deeper while snorkeling. Now you have to be careful with your ears. We're always changing. When I'm diving down 15, 20 feet, I'll use one hand to hold my nose and blow out ears. Otherwise my ears will really get sore after a while. And again, you have to make sure you have enough reserve air. I used to dive down to 30, 40 feet. I don't go much more than 20 or 25 feet now. Some people use a weight belt uh, with free diving so they're buoyant at maybe 20 feet. You have to be very cautious with a weight belt. Remember, you have to make sure you have enough to ascend okay but here's a picture of my daughter she'll free dive down to 30 or 40 feet um, here I did that I went down I took a picture of my kids and my nephew and it's fun you can get different uh, images while snorkeling if you go a little deeper here I dove down free to about 20 feet and caught this image of my daughter uh, free diving down behind a sea turtle got them all uh, in focus here my daughter dove down about 20, 25 feet and I caught this reef shark right off a of seven mile beach in Grand Caymans with a fisheye wide angle lens, got the reef shark and my daughter. Here's my wife in Caruso snorkeling. I got this image of a trumpet, trumpet fish with my wife topside on the undersurface. And here my wife took a picture of me diving about 30 feet to these eagle rays in Hawaii. And this is just me with my wide angle lens and Ike Light housing, no strobes, free diving. I was probably at about 25 feet at that time. And uh, here's when I'm down there, you can see the eagle ray down here and way up about 30, 35 feet is my wife swimming on the surface. And here when I got closer to the subject, you can see the actual uh, eagle rays. Available night, light, no strobe, just snorkeling. Uh, anywhere you see something. Here we're in uh, Bonaire and uh, got more pictures snorkeling. Now I want to talk a little bit about macro. Macro is a little trickier. In general you need a strobe to stop the action and allow a clear image. But you also need to hold still. You have to focus on the subject. Remember with macro there's very little depth of field. So you have to usually use a hand to hold on a rock or a piece of wood or something where you're not going to damage the reef of course, but you need to hold yourself uh, still. 
macro photography while snorkeling is much more challenging. But here in Bonaire, I got a picture of a barracuda right under the dock while snorkeling using a 60 millimeter macro lens and single strobe. Here in uh, uh, Sunset House in the Caymans, we went snorkeling in this little moat, this area uh, here, and we found an octopus at about 15 feet. We took turns diving down and holding a rock uh, to stabilize our camera and with a, my uh, Ike light housing uh, and a 60 millimeter macro and single strobe I was able to catch a pretty good picture of an oct octopus macro while snorkeling. Uh, here are my daughters and I on Seven Mile Beach. We go snorkeling at night and I decided, hey, why don't I try to shoot macro? And I dove down to about 10 feet uh, and uh, oh, this was during the day. I got a picture of a couple of squid and at night I, able, I saw this sleeping parrotfish. I dove down, was able to stabilize the image with my one hand, got one picture off by holding the camera and depressing the shutter with my other hand. And I got a good shot of the eye of a parrotfish, macro, while snorkeling at night. So you can do a lot of cool stuff with underwater photography while snorkeling. And this concludes this one. The next one, we're going to talk about split levels and close focus wide angle. Thanks for tuning in.